from beginning to the end. There's no place for argument. You are God all by yourself. We pray for the word of God we're about to hear. That God will give us the enablement, that understanding, that truly we could have a glimpse of what the Trinity is. We ask all this through Christ our Lord. Can I hear a better amen? Amen and amen. Today I have titled this homily, The Mystery of the Trinity. The Mystery of the Trinity. Today is the first Sunday after Pentecost, and having experienced the power of the Holy Spirit at noon, and the understanding he gives, the Holy Mother Church says, let us try to reflect on the most fundamental mystery of our faith. The most fundamental mystery of our faith. The mystery of the Trinity. The mystery of God's inner life. In the year 1774, a man named Ignaz Frags wrote a hymn that we sang at the entrance of today's Mass. The hymn of praise to the Trinity. And he titled that hymn, Holy God. Now in verse 3 precisely, he wrote, Holy Father, Holy Son, Holy Spirit, Three we name thee. Why in essence, only one, undivided God, we claim thee, and adoring Ben, why we own the mystery. In 1974, as far back, he wrote, as far back, he wrote this hymn of praise. And so we're talking about the Trinity. First, the concept Trinity. As I told us earlier, the Trinity is a mystery, a paradox, and a dogma. A mystery, not because it is beyond understanding, but because we cannot understand it fully as it is. The mind of man cannot comprehend the mystery of the Trinity. A paradox because when you try to understand it, you fail in understanding it and a dogma because the church gave a definitive understanding about what the Trinity is. The church gave a definitive understanding and says, this is what we are saying, no less, no more. Now, the biblical doctrine of the Trinity affirms that God is one being in three persons. God is one being in three persons. Father, Son, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. From all eternity, and these three persons are the same in substance, equal in power and glory. So interesting. You know, sometimes some people will want to say, God the Father is the senior man. God the Son is less senior. And God the Holy Spirit, no. They are equal in substance, equal in glory. All three persons of the Trinity are equally God. They are called the Godhead. The Godhead, it means they are saying God the Father is God. God the Son is God. God the Holy Spirit is God. Amen. Today, preachers are always very careful because there are some things you say you will fall into heresy. And there's a thin line between doctrinal teachings and heresy in matters of dogma. Our God is a community of persons. Our God is a community of persons, three, who are co-eternal in existence, co-equal in power and glory and divinity, co-substantial in, in essence. They are undivided in unity. They exist in a communion of love and in function. Although they are distinct, they do not operate in isolation. And there is no conflict, no suspicion. 
disunity or disharmony. You know, some people will tell you, in the Old Testament, we have God the Creator. In the New Testament, we have God the Redeemer. And again, we have the Holy Spirit the Sanctifier. It is an heresy. It's a wrong teaching. Because in creation, all were involved. In redemption, all were involved. And in the Holy Spirit, all is still involved. Amen. Please follow very keenly. Church, Catechism of the Catholic Church 203, asserts that this is only, there is only one God, one true God, eternal, infinite, and unchangeable. Eternal, infinite, and unchangeable. Incomprehensible, almighty, and ineffable. The Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Three persons indeed, but one essence. Substance or nature, entirely simple. Catechism of the Catholic Church, number 203. You know, for a very long time, there was this debate about the Trinity. What is this understanding of the Trinity? So many talks here and there. People were giving their opinions. And at the end of that discourse, they came up with a conclusion that, well, we could sum up the idea of the Trinity in two statements. They said, one, they talk about him one in essence. The Trinity, they are one in essence. And two, three in persons. Three in persons. What this means is that the Father is God. The Son is God. The Spirit is God. But they are not three gods. As some people begin to think, so you mean there are three gods now. They are not three gods, but only one God. The Father is not the Son. The Son is not the Spirit. The Spirit is not the Father. But each is God individually, and yet they are one God. It's a mystery. It's a mystery. Each is God individually, and yet they are one God. Now, some illustrations to buttress the point. But very quickly, before, we, before I give you some illustrations, just know that illustrations do not give us the exact. They are only pointer to help us understand, at least. I know for many years, some of us must have heard the story of Augustine and how he tries to understand the Trinity and a little baby just messed him up. I said, how can you understand the Trinity? You can't. And so many other stories. But I come up with this. The first illustration I want to give is water. Water, as we know, exists in solid, liquid, and steam. In three forms. Solid, liquid, and steam. There is also a physical condition where water will exist in solid, liquid, and steam at the same time. For those who know, there is a physical condition where water exists in these three forms at the same time. These, some scholars have said, okay, we can use this to talk about the Trinity. They exist in three persons, but yet they are one. Now we'll talk about an egg. When you hold an egg in your hand, you're just holding an egg. But the egg is a composite of three things. We have the shell, which is the outer, the egg white, the inner, and we have the yolk. Without these three components, the egg can never be complete. And so we liken it to the Trinity. Then we'll talk about the man. As a person, the man could be a husband, he could be a son, and he could be a father. At the same person, the same person, one man, a husband, a son, and a father. So we liken it also to the Trinity. Now we could also liken it to the husband and wife. We are told in the scriptures that the two become one. How God did the arithmetic, one plus one, instead of two, he says they are one. And so we say if God could give the understanding of one plus one instead of two, he says one, it could be a community of three persons, but yet one God. Amen. Amen. The Trinity and us. Now, the Trinity answers the question, what was God doing before the creation of the world? Some people must have asked this question over time. 
how, how did God even come about this world? What was he doing and all that? Again, we are told, God, as we have seen, is a community of persons. Hence, we are told of the love that exists between them. Jesus says, the Father loved the Son, and the Son loved the Father. There is an intimacy between the Trinity that exists. And in fact, the human desire for intimacy and communication flowed from them. Man, by nature, interacts. And so, where did we get this idea of interaction from? If not from a God who has created us. Amen. That design is part of the image of God within each and every one of us. It's part of the image of God within each and every one of us to communicate and to be in intimacy. Now, to give us a kind of understanding about Trinity, in Genesis chapter 1, when God wanted to make man, he said, let us make man. He was not speaking alone. He was speaking as a community of persons. Let us make man in our own image after our likeness. And in the Tower of Babel, in Genesis chapter 11, he also says, let us go and confuse the language of men. Let us again. And when God visited Abraham in the Old Testament, in Genesis chapter 18, he also said, let us. He came in three persons. And Abraham recognized them. And he told Sarah, you will give birth by this time next year. Sarah was laughing. But God came to checkmate the land of Sodom and Gomorrah. And he came in three persons. Now, breaking into the New Testament, we could understand how God sent an angel to Mary. And the angel said, the Holy Spirit will overshadow you. Please try to understand how the three of them work together. The Holy Spirit will overshadow you and you will bear a son. Father, son, the Holy Spirit. And in Matthew 28, 19, where we have the, the great commissioning, and Jesus says, go therefore, baptize in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And in John 10, he made it, he made it very clear. He said, I and the Father, we are one. He said, Thomas, in fact, to have seen me is to have seen the Father. This is what Jesus is saying, that he is God. Amen. Amen. And don't forget, even on the cross of Calvary, while he was dying, all the time he was praying, Father, help Father. He was using the name Father. But on the cross of Calvary, he said, my God, my God. This was a God communicating with a God. My God, my God. Why have thou forsaken me? Amen. Again, we speak about God is never lowly. Some people don't think God is lowly. Say, ah, our, God, our God is lowly. That, that was why he created human beings. No. God is never lowly. He did not create us because he needed us. Please get it clear. We are told even by the catechism of the church that God created ex nihilio, out of nothing by his word. Ex nihilio, out of nothing. God is never lowly. God could have existed forever without us. Of course, he is God. The song we sang from beginning to the end. That he made us out of his, his statement, he made us out of great love for himself and his great wisdom and plan. And that's why we are told God so loved the world. He created us out of love by his word. Amen. The Trinity teaches us that God is beyond human comprehension. Comprehension. St. Augustine says, when we understand God, he ceases to be God. When we understand him, he is no longer God. The Trinity helps us understand the drama of the cross as I said before my God my God this was a God communicating to a God how can a man carry the sins of the whole world it's impossible here we speak about an infinite God who is capable of carrying our sins by himself 
The Trinity teaches us to live in togetherness. This is the essence of the solemnity of the Trinity. To live in togetherness, oneness and in unity. Our world is so bastardized now with so much disunity, so much disharmony. Even in the church, sometimes we'll talk about peace, peace, peace. We'll talk about let peace reign, let peace reign. We're not talking about peace to reign from the outside. We're talking about peace to reign from within. And this is what the Trinity teaches, that we should live in togetherness, in harmony, not in disharmony, and in unity. It's an island, not man. You cannot exist in isolation. Otherwise, Aristotle says you will die off because man by nature is a social being. If you stay alone for too long, you will die off and you cease to exist. Why each of us is a unique expression of God? Together, do we reflect the image of God? We are unique expressions of God but only together do we reflect the image of God. Therefore, this unity among Christians is a scandal. Amen. We are called this day to live together and accommodate each other. In as much as we are in this world, we are not perfect. And we must learn to tolerate each other at all times. I am because you are is a very strong word from this from South Africa, Ubuntu. I am because you are. Those who reject God, friends in Christ, reject a God who does not exist. Because sometimes you hear people say, I am tired of God. Where had God been when I'm passing through so many crises? I was conversing with somebody and she was saying, Father, I'm tired. Where was God in all of this? I said, my dear, despite what you have passed through, God still kept you alive. To exist is to know that God loves you personally. Those who walk away from God, walk away from a God they have never met. For some people, I was offended in church, therefore I will not come to church again. You are walking away from a God you have never met. God is nothing like what the saints say he is. He is beyond whatever we could think and imagine, says St. Augustine. Bow your heads. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We give you praise, honor, and adoration. The blessed trinity one in three and three in one come into our hearts reign in our families reign in our lives we ask that even as we celebrate thee today that your presence in our lives will be manifold and will manifest itself in everything that we do we ask all these through christ our lord You don't need a 